What are the options being put before the president right now? Presumably, he has an entire uh, team of people that can give him options if he were to decide to act militarily. What does that list look like? Well, as your earlier guest suggested, there are a number of military options that can be taken. I, I don't think nuclear weapons would be used in this case simply because of the fallout risk uh, to South Korea. But if you remember a few months ago when the so-named mother of all bombs was used in Afghanistan, that would be a fairly uh, practical method of going against some of the deep and hardened targets that they have inside of North Korea. But I think we're spending too much time on the military aspects. Uh, frankly, I think this is really going to end up a diplomatic options being pursued more than anything else. Because at the end of the day, uh, these messages are not simply to North Korea, they're also to China as well, to try to get China to do what we've always said they need to do, which is to take care of the situation. So diplomacy always is the preferred course, no question about it. It hasn't been very successful in the past, I think it's fair to say. Why do we believe this time it might work? Well, because the diplomacy for the last 15 years has been, as some people, such as Senator McCain say, speak softly and carry a big stick. That's not the kind of diplomacy that somebody like Kim Jong-un is going to respond to. So I think what you've seen is actually some amped up rhetoric that is being used against the North Koreans that simply say, look, we know your major goal is to keep the regime alive. Uh, so let's make sure you do that because we are willing and able to use our capabilities to take out your capabilities. Because the quiet diplomacy, the speak softly, fundamentally hasn't worked. He has continued to pursue a weapons program in excess of anyone else in this world, and now that's a threat. So, so finally, General, as you say, uh, military really is not a preferred option by any means. But yeah. as I recall, when you got to West Point, actually your first assignment was to South Korea in the, in, the, in the artillery over there. So you know the world over there very well. Give us some sense of what it would mean if we had any attack on North Korea and they retaliated against South Korea. I remember in 1994 when this yeah. came up as a crisis, there were enormous casual estimates. Well, uh, when I was there in 1978, there was absolutely nothing between Seoul and 30 miles to the north, which was a demilitarized zone. Uh, since then, Seoul's outskirts now go almost to the demilitarized zone. Uh, the North Koreans smartly have put most of their 30,000 artillery uh, units right along the border. And so let's be very clear that a conventional attack by the North Koreans into the South Korean city of Seoul would be millions of casualties simply from conventional weapons alone. So that's another reason why we've got to tread carefully uh, before we start doing any uh, unnecessarily provocative actions. Nonetheless, deterrence, both militarily and diplomatically, has to be the way to go to solve this current crisis.